Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for episode 17. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into my review of this episode. I thought this was a really good episode, probably one of the best episodes of the season. I thought it was really solid. I think the addition of Lex definitely helped. It made the Nixley stuff so much more interesting. Like, I still have problems with Nixley. I think she's a bit over the top. She's actually not that much of a criminal. Like, yeah, she does bad acts and stuff. But she's a bit of a mischief, you know. And I guess that's what they're going for when they're always saying, Okay, now laugh. And she always laughs every time and does these weird poses and stuff. But anyway, so adding Lex into that... I think really really helped sell her as a villain more so and I like the idea of them being like this kind of twisted couple but also the Alex and Kelly stuff this episode so great as well as you know Jean and Supergirl they had so many great scenes um, so yeah definitely one of the strongest episodes this season that's my quick kind of sum up of my thoughts but let's go bit by bit and break everything down. Okay, so it begins, and it begins with a big revelation that Lex is in fact not the Lex from our time, but Lex from the future, from the 31st century. What the hell? That is crazy. I had no idea that would be the case here, because as you guys remember, Lex, the last time we saw him, sent Kara into the Phantom Zone, and we kind of just presumed he was in hiding or something, and that's why he never showed up. That was actually referenced by Team Supergirl this episode, Brainy thought he was just hiding, and they had no idea maybe he would have gone and gone to the future, which does make sense because there is a lot of tech there and it's definitely something that would draw Lex Luthor to a time zone like that if he can time travel, and so he literally time travels back in this episode to help Nixley, and the voice that you were hearing wasn't Lex last episode, it was actually Nixley's future consciousness that Lex was able to save before Nixley died. And that is definitely one of the biggest revelations along with Lex being a time traveller from the future, that Nixley in fact dies in the future, and although she gets the Allstone, she gets her revenge, but it's not as successful as she initially imagined because it comes with the big consequence of her death. So yeah, what a start to the episode, I really really like that scene and the kind of huge revelations in regards to Lex. And so then we go back to Team Supergirl and Alex in the tower reveals that she has the proposal ring for Kelly. And so Kara and John are extremely excited, obviously, because this is a big day for Alex and they can't wait. But there is some secret double crossing going on in the background which is revealed later in the episode. And so Alex and Esme go to Al's alien bar that we've seen since season 2 on Supergirl. They go there only to find out that it's been fully booked for that day. And this is a huge disappointment for Alex because no one ever books this bar and so Alex is very surprised but also devastated and she has to deal with this throughout the rest of the episode. But in regards to Lex and Nixley, Lex reunites with his henchman, I forgot his name, I always forget but he always shows up every time Lex shows up and he's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he reveals that Lex in the future in fact, he's in love with Nixley, and they have this kind of twisted relationship where, yes, Lex never has liked anyone in his whole entire life, and he's definitely not loved anyone, but with Nixley, he found a perfect match because they're both twisted, they're both cunning, they're both evil, and there is somehow this big kind of link between them and it makes Lex feel like he's never felt before and I really really loved all John Christ scenes throughout this episode. Team Supergirl draw Nixley out and Nixley's actually saved by Lex and obviously she doesn't take to that very nicely and this happens a couple of times throughout the episode because Nixley is very much so against the idea of having help by this kind of male savior type figure that is Lex Luthor in this case because he is obsessed with her and isn't going to let her go because, but she doesn't know, he's in love with her in the future and that's why, because he lost her and doesn't want to lose her again, so that's why he's been a bit clingy, but Nixley comes around by the end of the episode and realizes that Lex is actually not messing around and he means this, he's here to help her. And so at the point where Lex shows up, it's great, I love Team Supergirl's reaction, they all completely shocked, Lena's magic goes haywire, as soon as Lex shows up and Lex uses Kryptonite against Supergirl, she's on the ground, she gets completely wiped out by the Kryptonite, 
and Alexis is able to get Nixie out of there and so we cut to Supergirl waking up and you know she's been healed by Lena by the power of science not magic and so that's when she wakes up they have a little conversation and this is at the revelation that Lex is from the 31st century and Brainy is annoyed that he didn't think of this and he also hasn't contacted the Legion which is quite a surprise to the rest of the team because you know he would have done this normally because if he's from the 31st century the Legion would have lots of information on him and his nefarious deeds in the future but he hasn't done that because he's afraid because the last time he did that he was told to help Lex and be on his side and obviously betray his friends so he's very scared of doing that once again and so Supergirl and John they would go on to discuss how to tap into the courage totem and John is actually able to do it and so he goes back to the one time where he had no courage obviously that is on Mars and so he has the courage to do it this scene sent chills down my spine I really really was into it and so John fought like hell however even with all of his courage Yes, he was able to defeat some of the White Martians, he wasn't actually able to save his daughters, but he is successful and he's able to get the Courage Totem. And so let's move on from that. Lex actually kidnaps Mitch because he needs him to deliver some information to Nixley that will somehow lead her to him. And Mitch does this, he goes and he tells her where to find the Love Totem and the love totem actually at the point where Nixie finds it and Team Supergirl is there and they're in Lisbon and Portugal in a church, it actually disappears. And when Nixie shows up she does her silly laugh again and I do think it's a bit too much because she does that pretty much every time she comes and shows up. That's like my one kind of big thing against Nixley but like I said at the start of the video I do think Lex actually really helps and them two paired together does sound very good and I can't wait to see them in the next few episodes because I think he's going to kind of tame her down a little bit which I think is definitely a good thing and so also during this scene Supergirl is ravished with nightmares as the phantoms appear in front of her eyes and she becomes a phantom nearly. This is obviously a completely shocking moment and we've been waiting for some sort of continuation of her fears because that was made a big deal out of in like the first two episodes since she returned but then since then we kind of forgot about the phantom zone but now with the return of lex and the dream totem out there it makes complete sense that she would have these nightmares and so back on nixley's side lex actually confirms to her that she gets her revenge in the future however it was before she met lex but she always talks about how great it was and how brilliant it was to finally get their revenge but again it came with a price because she was killed in the future again they don't reveal exactly how she dies but it's somehow linked to the totems it's presumed but back on the happy side we have kelly who shows up at owl's bar as alex storms in to try and convince Al to give her the bar for the night but it turns out that Kelly booked Al's in the first place and that was a great surprise I had no idea I mean I had my suspicions but considering that they had the exact same plans and Esme screaming its fate I thought was really really cute and I thought it was a great conclusion to that kind of Alex saga throughout this episode and so Kelly gets out her proposal ring but then Alex is like no I want to do it and so she goes to reach inside her pocket for hers but instead she finds the love totem so that is where the love totem disappeared to from the church in Portugal and at this point they realize oh crap we know that Lex and Nixie are just about to show up because they are tracking them and so surely enough they do show up and Esme screams Supergirl the team comes in to help and both sides have an all out brawl in the bar and it's a huge fight Lex stops Nixley from being vaporized as Nixley is overcome by Supergirl, Jean, and Brainy. And Lex makes a strange decision to save Nixley. Well, it's not too strange for us, but for the rest of the characters that don't know much about Lex in the future, it's a very odd decision for him to not go for the totem, but instead to save Nixley from being vaporized. And so at that point, Jean also realizes that he destroyed the love totem, or so they think. And this was a great scene. I thought it was one of the best scenes throughout the episode. It definitely showed how committed Lex was. And it completely perplexes Brainy, who ponders upon this after the proposal goes down at the tower with Alex proposing to Kelly. And Alex says, 
you're the person that I want to watch Die Hard with for the rest of my life. Supergirl laughs and everyone laughs and I laughed and I thought it was just a very great proposal and I was really into it. So it's amazing and I can't wait for this to go down and I think it's a great way to end the series with Alex finally finding her happiness. And so back with Lex, he fully explains his love for Nixley and so this is actually the one moment where Nixley kind of accepts his help and accepts you know, his offer to be, you know, kind of partners, not even just lovers or anything like that, but for now they're going to be friends, and it's going to build towards what they have in the future, and I thought it was a great way to kind of end the Lex story for this episode, although it doesn't technically end. Even though Lex doesn't show up again, we have William who meets Lex's henchman, and this is him going undercover as he promised Andrea earlier in the episode, and also Andrea goes to Lex's office, and gather some information, some proof, so that she can run the article on Catco. And this is literally the same scene that happened earlier in the season, where she went into the office, I think it was Lex's office as well, and gained the details about Team Supergirl and the kind of identities, I guess. And it's literally like one of the only times that she uses her costume and uses her powers. I don't know why she doesn't use it more. I wouldn't be surprised if they shot it at the exact same time because it looks pretty much bang on. Like she just shows up in her costume for no reason. I guess it's just her disguise when she's using her powers and just like takes the notes and that's it. Yeah, so still not sure about Andrea. I don't think she's one of the best characters. I think she's definitely one of the weakest throughout the season. And so Lex has the hope totem he reveals at the end of the episode. And apparently they can never be destroyed, the essence always lives on, which leads into the big revelation that the love totem isn't destroyed, it's in fact inside Esme. What? Well, that makes complete sense, because there is so much love obviously in Esme, and you know, she's been given so much love by Team Supergirl, and by specifically Alex and Kelly, that, I mean, making her the love totem makes 100% sense. But this means that a kidnapping is inbound or Lex is probably going to try and excavate the totem out of her somehow or maybe they actually have to use her in order to fully get the power of all the totems. But it's a great twist and a great cliffhanger to end off the episode because it does set up the stakes for Esme and Alex and Kelly as well because they're going to be after Esme which is going to be a big, big deal. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you did please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel. Also please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video but for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.